G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Car Tune Company in New Zealand. If you're doing 1UZ conversions or anything on 1UZ engines, hopefully you've already hit that subscribe button. But I'm going to do a, a little bit of a series on other stuff this time, which is going to be aftermarket computers. Sure, most of my aftermarket computers are on 1UZs, but if you take that same information, it crosses to all makes and models. So it's going to be helpful for everyone. I've worked on a lot of different uh, makes and models of ECU. Being that I like Kiwi made, uh, I'm predominantly uh, selling Link. I do the old Microtech, had to wire a few mega squirts, I'm not a fan. Uh, and on the top end on the sprint boats, we're using the Motec, which is definitely industry standard, and it's what the other guys are trying to be. So I was looking over YouTube at, at different videos, and there's not a lot on wiring up ECUs broken down into the, into the bare basics. So I'm going to do a bit of a series over the next few months, and this is the first of that series. This one we're going to discuss the choosing of the ECUs, the decisions you need to make, and then we'll move on, sort of a continuation of this one is, instead of going through every single bit that ECUs do, I'm going to give some examples and the choices I made and the jobs that I use different ECUs in the range of blink that I've got behind me. When you're looking at getting an aftermarket ECU, planning goes a long way. So sitting down, working out what you need, talking to your supplier, talking to the person who's wiring it, and if there's a different person tuning it, then talking to the person who's tuning it. For the lint range, there's a helpful little guide, comparison guide. It's on the back of the catalogue, or it's on the website. But a lot of this means nothing if you don't have the knowledge of the ECU. If you are considering ECUs and you want to make a comment, ask some questions, give me some information about the vehicles that you want to put them on, um, I'm willing to help. I'm going to have a bit of a discussion, make some suggestions. I'm going to be biased towards Link in this situation, but there's plenty of other ECUs that the same information uh, can be applicable to. So the basics of the ECU is to run the engine, but these days there's other decisions to be made as well, such as the, the rest of the vehicle. We're seeing more vehicles with drive-by-wire, so making sure you get the right ECU is really important. A lot of guys get out the cash, wander in and say I want the cheapest ECU. And if that ECU doesn't do their job, they may as well just burn their money. I'm not actually going to burn it, but it says real money. I had a one recently, the vehicle was uh, had drive-by-wire, no drive-by-wire in the ECU that was chosen, wrong crank sensors were chosen, wrong signals were, it wasn't going to work. What a waste of time, and I had to be called in to fix it, and that's a little annoying because the right decisions in the first place, and it wasn't actually the customer's fault in this case, but good decisions, good planning would have, and good communication would have solved that problem. So the basics of an ECU. I've got a bit of a board here. A few decisions to make. Spark and fuel. I've written injectors. So, Injectors, getting that fuel into that engine. How many injectors have you got? Four cylinders, pretty easy because all of this range has at least four injector drives. But your six and your eight, your twelves, that's going to make a few different changes there. So up to eight, we can go sequential. We've got computers with eight injector drives. Over that, with this range, then you are going to need to choose um, to group them. Or even with an 8 cylinder, you can choose to group them, get a slightly more budget ECU, uh, and still get very, very good results. Perfectly fine to group those injectors together. We've got high impedance or low impedance injectors, and that's quite important as well. You can put resistors in, but often it's easier just to buy the correct ECU that can do a peak and hold injector, such as the Fury, Extreme, or Thunder. Below that, 
they don't have peak and hold function. Now, if I use terms that you don't understand, you're willing to ask, and I can explain, or if there's enough requests, I might do a video just to explain some of these terms. A lot of guys on the internet have got some amazing information, but it's very techo. So we're trying just to keep it real simple in this, in this uh, set of videos. Now, of course, there'll be some setups that you'll run um, injection, but you won't run any spark. Sprint boat with a magneto. Uh, that's probably the main one. And the other ones, I generally recommend converting it to full electronic control of the spark, because you do get a better mat. Right, sometimes you'll need spark, but you won't have any fuel, such as a stock car, some race cars, an LS motor with a carburetor on it. All of these ECUs can be used for either, either either just fuel or just spark or the combination. So with spark, we're going to go from this end. Some engines, of course, have just a distributor, so you only need one driver, one ignition driver. Two coils, early Lexus. That's pretty straightforward. And in some of them, you can use those extra ignition drivers for it as auxiliaries. Wasted spark, maybe Subarus, some of your Mitsis. All going to individual coils. And there's also the option if you've got a, a eight coils and you've only got four outputs, you can group them together and wire it as a wasted spark. It's not ideal, but it is an option. The other things to look at after you've got your fuel and spark sorted is your auxiliary outputs. Now your auxiliary outputs, a big one of them, can be that idle control, especially if you've got drive by wire. Same deal if you've got a drive by wire engine. It makes sense to buy a computer with the drive-by-wire rather than putting a manual throttle body on it and spending the time and money converting it over. It's often just as cost-effective to buy the ECU and set it up properly. A lot of guys, though, are scared of that stuff, and there's nothing to be scared of. Hey, you might make a few, few mistakes, but it's a good learning curve as well. And away you go. There's some throttle bodies, drive-by-wire throttle bodies I don't like. One of them's on a 1UZ. But you work your way through it and you get them sorted. You need to look at how many temperature inputs you want to put in. If you want knob control, fortunately these all have OBD2, OBD outputs. And those other auxiliaries you want to run. Are you running air cold? Pretty much all of them have output for fan and fuel pumping. You don't always need a fan if you've got a viscous hub. Taco output, boost control. Uh, I often use one of the digital inputs. And then I convert the speedo, I put a the speedo in on the digital, put a speedo out, and I use the computer as a signal converter. It means I don't have to buy an extra box, and I'm doing it all on the one ECU. So it makes a lot of sense if you've got that stuff around the vehicle to do it that way. Um, in my next video, I'll explain a Prado I just did with a Thunder, and I used it for running the dash and a whole lot of other things, and we just about maxed out the biggest ECU the Link make. BBT control. The bottom range, bottom of the range doesn't do the VVT control, so you've got to watch that. And then what other analog inputs you're putting in? Other things to consider is how you're wiring the setup. Are you doing it with a, a plug-in? Plug-ins are great if the loom on the vehicle's in good order, but if there's issues in that loom, then a wiring might suit you better. That's a plug-in, well there was a plug-in in this box until I plugged it in, uh, actually to a Nissan Patrol. They don't make a plug-in for a Nissan control, Patrol, but with a few changes I was able to get that one to plug in. Plug-in pin kit. So sometimes you just buy a plug with a set of pins, use the original loom, cut the, the header plug off, the factory ECU plug off, Crimp your pins on, pop them into the plug, plug in the aftermarket ECU. Now we'll go make a video more on these wiring techniques later on in the series. So after the plug and pin kit, we've got the short loom. So that's 400 uh, mils long. You might use this in a situation where the, there's not enough room to mount the stock ECU and the aftermarket ECU and you're piggybacking the two together. I use this one to actually power up my ECUs uh, before I unlock them. But I do prefer, in fact, to make a, a full new loom. 
So we've got a two and a half meter loom. Or sometimes, I've got some looms here to go out to a job, five meter looms when the ECU's being mounted a long way away from uh, the engine. Maybe in a jet boat, or this one's going in an off-road truck. So other bits and pieces that you need to consider when you're pricing up your ECU is the connectors. So new plugs, wiring connectors. For the UZs, I've got a lot of them, pretty much got the whole engine. And then, things like pressure sensors. So that allows the oil pressure to go to the link. And then you can use the link to run a gauge or put in, um, put in some warnings for oil pressure. I really like having proper wide band in them. So some of them have got it in there. The Thunder, the Fury, both have got internal wide bands. So that's awesome. But if you don't have, if you get one of the other ECUs, then a can lambda is a great thing to add in there. And I love those, they're, they're a fantastic tuning tool. Great for monitoring, and I like to have the logging. Turn the logging on so you can see what your mixture's doing. There's also things like temp sensors. Uh, I don't see much point in upgrading an ECU, building a new loom with new connectors, and then running a 20, 25 year old temp sensor for the few dollars that they are. So while we're thinking about that, uh, oil pressure, oh, oil temperature sensors, and the air temp sensor. So if you're thinking about an ECU, or you're not sure where to go and want some advice, drop a line in the comments, give me some information about what vehicle you're running. Also look out for the next video, what I'm going to do is uh, go through these, this range of ECUs and explain why I chose them for each job. I'm trying to keep these videos not too long. Uh, I tend to be, uh, I tend to have, be quite informative, I hope, so they tend to stretch out a little bit. That's what I like. That's who I am. So when you think about ECUs, do some planning, work out your basic needs and the other stuff that you want to do. Try to future proof it. If you're getting someone else to wire and tune it, have a chat to them and use an ECU that they're confident with. So hopefully if you've liked this video, you're going to push that subscribe button and like the video as well. Look out for the, the rest of the series. And I hope that's been helpful. Talk to you later.